Hello, good people, and welcome to some on-chain analysis with pandas and Python. And today we're going to be looking at the number of blocks that were mined per day on the Bitcoin blockchain, as well as the number of transactions associated with those blocks. Now, the purpose of this is we want to learn pandas. However, we want to learn pandas using some cool data. And what's cooler data and more on topic than on-chain analysis, which is a simple, fancy word for doing analysis on top of a blockchain. Bitcoin is one of them. You could do analysis on a whole bunch of different types of blockchains. If you want to see other types of analysis, just let me know and let's go for it. But for today, let's jump into it. We're going to be looking at a lot of cool data and doing some simple pandas and hopefully learning along the way. Now, uh, what you'll see here is I have a big tutorial on a Google Colab notebook. Now you can get this at dataindependent.com if you want to go check it out. And I'm going to be uh, breezing through the reading part and I'm just going to go straight to the code. If you want to read it, please, I encourage you to go to dataindependent.com and find it. So first we're going to download or import all of our packages. We have requests in order to make a call to the internet, to the API. We have pandas, which we know and love. We're going to import time to make sure our requests slow down so we don't get rate limited. Um, we actually don't need this one. That one was a little earlier. And then we finally have matplotlib in order to plot some of the results that we're going to get. Cool. So first thing I want to do is I want to create a date range. So this date range, what it's going to do is I'm going to query an API and it's going to give me the number of blocks and transactions uh, per day. But I need to tell it which days I want, to, want it to query. So here I'm using pandas uh, date range to create a date range. I'm going to start on uh, January 1st, 2018. I'm going to end on February 1st, 2018. And as you can see here, here are all my dates. Um, however, this is not the format that I need the dates in. I need them in a uh, with no dashes, basically. So I'm going to do list comprehension, and I'm going to take these dates in this date range for D, and I'm going to say D dot, uh, basically string format at the time, and I'm going to say year, month, date with no uh, hyphens and I'm just going to look at the first 10 and print those out and as you can see here this 180101 gets translated into uh, the same thing but with no dashes. Cool. Um, next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make an API call and I'm going to do that by using uh, chain.api.btc.com. Now through building this tutorial I found out that they have very slow uh, rate limits which is fine as long as you have time to wait. If you don't have time to wait, I encourage you to find another API uh, and possibly start paying for some data access. But either way, I'm going to start off with a blank list of blocks. This is where the blocks are going to go into. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for loop. And I'm going to say for date in date range, which has been formatted, which is that list of uh, 30 dates that you saw above, uh, go through there, basically make the API call, make the request, get the output, convert it into JSON, um, and then add it to, or extend it to my block lists. Now I'm doing extend versus append because append will append a new list. So all of a sudden I'll have like a new 30 new lists of, uh, of dates, which I don't want. I just want to extend, which means I keep one long list that's 30 times as long. I'm going to sleep for 10 seconds. And if this seems like an obnoxious amount, it's because it is. Um, I went back and forth, back and forth, and 10 seconds seemed to work. And we're just going to roll with that. Don't worry, I'm going to skip the video. And then for every five uh, iterations of it, because I did enumerate up here, I'll get the index and I'm going to just print uh, how far along we've gone. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to wait for it. And we'll see you in a sec here. Awesome. Now that that is finished, let's check out the status code of our last request 200. That means we are 300 and we're good to go. Um, let's look at one of the block responses. And so we can actually see what the data looks like. And so what we just did is we just pulled uh, a bunch of blocks and a block is a group of transactions that have been mined on the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, this is one of those blocks and it describes that block. Um, this isn't it exactly, but uh, it's close. Um, so what we can see here is we we'll see the good stuff, the hash, this is going to be a representation of the block and it's going to be unique to the block. But most importantly, I'm going to use height as a unique identifier. And height simply says how many blocks, uh, what number block is this mined in the first place? And so this says that this was the 500, 
5, 502,116th block mined. Okay, cool. Um, we see the next block that came after it. Okay, cool. We don't care about that. We don't care about that. What I do care about is timestamp, which says when this block was mined. And I do care about transaction count. And this says how many transactions were in the block. Okay, so in this case, there is 2,598 transactions in the block. So what we're going to do is we need to parse this information. And you know, while we're at it, I didn't add this, but let's go ahead and let's see how many blocks. Let's just says what I care about. Let's see how many blocks, um, blocks list. And I'm just going to do a length so we can see how many blocks we actually have. And you can see we have 5,215 blocks. Um, I only care about a few of those fields, and so I'm going to extract those out. Timestamp, height, and transaction count. Again, using list comprehension. And you can see here that I now have this smaller list of just the data that I want. Timestamp, height, and transaction count. Okay, cool. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data frame with this list. And this is as simple as saying pd.dataframe. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to pass it my list. And then I'm going to give it the columns that is uh, associated to this list in order that they appear in the list. So timestamp height transaction count, timestamp height transaction count. Wonderful. And let's print that out and see what we have here. We have timestamp height and transaction count. It's perfect. That's what we're looking for. Um, next thing I'm going to do is these dates, these timestamps, uh, it's gibberish. Well, it's not gibberish. It's just a number of seconds and since the epoch, but uh, epoch, but I want to change that into uh, just type, type the date because this also includes, it's a date time. It also includes a time. I just care about the date. Um, so great. So now we have when this block was mined, we have the unique identifier, identifier for it, which is the height. And then we have the transaction count for it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group by and I'm going to group by this date. And I'm going to say, hey, distinct count this height, meaning because that's the unique identifier. So we'll see how many blocks we have. And then I'm going to sum up all the transactions. So we know how many transactions happened on that day. And so here I'm going to use pandas group by, and there's a couple ways to do pandas group by. I have actually a full tutorial on it uh, right here. If you wanted to go check it out, three different methods. Um, however, uh, I'm going to do the most verbose way. It's the longest, but to me, it's also the clearest and you can see very easily what's going on. So I'm going to create a new data frame called DF grouped and I'm going to say DF dot group by, and I'm going to group by timestamp, which is this column that we have right here. And then I'm going to start my ag functions. And these are my aggregate functions. And this basically says, hey, what do you want me to do with all of the data that gets smushed together? How do you want me to process it? Well, I'm going to, I want to create two new columns. The first one I'm going to call is number of blocks. And what I'm going to do here is it's going to be a named ag and it's going to be the column, uh, column height, which refers to this height right here. And then I'm going to say, hey, the aggregate function I want you to use is PD series and unique. And N unique is number of uniques. So it's gonna bring all those blocks together and it's gonna count the number of distinct values. The next thing that I wanna, the next column I wanna make is I wanna get the number of transactions. And so this is gonna be a named column again, which is transaction count, which is from our data frame up above, except this time the aggregate function that I wanna use is pd.series.sum. So this says what it's gonna do now is it's gonna take all those transaction counts and it's gonna sum them together. And the reason why we can do that is because uh, transactions are specific to a block and there's no duplicates across blocks, which means that you can sum them together without uh, doubling up anything. So let's do that and let's take a look at the head of this new data frame. Cool, so now we have what we have here is we have the timestamp, but we only have one uh, date per row, which is exactly what we wanted our group by to do. We have the number of distinct blocks and we have the number of transactions which is very cool. And that's what we wanted to do. Now we can see here on 118 or on January 1st, 2018, 156 blocks were mined. And the number of transactions that happened on that day was 241,000. And if we just did some very quick math, 241,757 divided by 156, that means an average of 1500 blocks or 1500 transactions per block, which is interesting. Cool. Um, great. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically plot this. The reason why there's so much code here is because we're doing a double access plot, but I encourage you to uh, go back and check out this code if you want. And what we have here is we have our dates, uh, across the month of what we've queried and we have two axes, the number of blocks in green. 
Okay, cool. That looks kind of steady, except for kind of a big dip right here. And we have number of transactions in blue. And this actually looks like it's going down, which is interesting. Well, cool. Well, what we just did is we just did some on-chain analysis. And we analyzed how many Bitcoin transaction blocks there were per day, along with the number of transactions. Uh, very easy. And you can see that there's some simple pandas that we use here. But this is a well-rounded on-chain analysis project. I hope that you learned a lot. Let me know what else you would love to learn. And let's do it. Happy data analyzing.